Welcome. Thanks for coming to the Autism Solution Center. I'm Laura Corby. I'm the founder and the CEO, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about what we do here and what our long-term goals are for the Autism Solution Center. Come with me. Let me show you. The Autism Center's been here in this particular spot for about five years, but we've been in existence as a corporation for over eight years. Um, we've been a 501c3 nonprofit for five years. When we started, our goal for the organization was to make sure that we provided services to families in need regardless of their ability to pay. As the parent of two children with autism spectrum disorders, what I found is that there really was not appropriate help available for my children to provide what was necessary. So we ended up going out and researching over about an eight-year period and looking at medical, nutritional, therapeutic, um, neurofeedback, many other means um, of, of integrating a multimodal type system that could provide treatment for these children and families as a whole. And not just dealing with the child himself, but looking at the entire family unit. It's very important when we're treating these families that we look at the family unit as a whole because we have to have continuity across all settings. So we're working with families, we're working with therapists, we're working with educational systems and making sure everyone is on the same track. Our goal is to have a one-stop shop for autism. What we mean by that is incorporating everything under one roof. So we do everything from beginning diagnostics to having MDs on staff that can do the medical and dietary, that um, therapists that can do music therapy, art therapy, occupational therapy, speech and language pathology, all of the different types of therapy that are necessary, but also integrating other approaches in, such as having acupuncture, acupressure, massage, um, Tesla energy lights, neurofeedback, many other approaches that just help increase the efficacy of the things that we're already doing. The long-term goal for the center, if you look at this, is really almost like a college campus. The goal for the Autism Center is to be able to have everything in one place and to have one of these facilities in each of the 50 states and also abroad in other countries so that no one really ever has to go outside their state to get the assistance that they need. We're looking at medical, psychiatric, exam offices, therapeutic spaces here in this first building and that's on the first floor. If, or second floor rather. If you look at the first floor of that main building, we have a grocery store, which is really gonna be very much like a natural health food store that incorporates gluten-free, casein-free, soy-free, and many of the other dietary needs that our families have. We also will have a compound pharmacy, as one of the things you learn very quickly in autism is that many of the uh, supplements and medications have to be specifically compounded for these kids because of food allergens and what have you. We also have a classroom we do intend to have a school in each of the locations. We have this area, which is a cafetorium and a library. Now, we had this designed specifically with a special purpose in mind, to not only be the cafeteria during the day for when we have school kids, but these walls are removable. And what that enables us to do is to provide cooking type classes for families that need assistance in learning how to do gluten-free, casein-free, soy-free, um, all of the different needs that they have. Many people are overwhelmed by the thought of starting a new diet and by being able to teach them and show them firsthand how easy this is, we're hoping that'll pull down some of those barriers. These walls remove and so we can slide those back and have an open venue directly into the main kitchen so that we can teach these cooking classes and help these families out. The upper levels here are administrative offices. That's also where we have most of our volunteers. We also intend to open a biomedical and research lab in each of these facilities. Now the benefit with this, currently we have an MD on staff um, who sees patients here. He and I work together and we'll talk a little bit more about that. But when we run blood work, urine work, organic acids, um, stool testing, many of the different things that we do, currently those are having to be sent off to numerous different labs and I'm sure you all know what type of cost is involved in having that type of work done. So by having labs on site, it allows us to not only do everything in-house, which keeps the cost down, but it also allows us a little bit more control so that we can start doing some uh, research and development work. We can also look at some different uh, clinical trials and start getting to some answers that we're just not finding anywhere else. 
This is an article that was done by the Commercial Appeal, um, and this was in our first building. Hey, Evan. Hey, Laura. Hi, darling. What you doing? Well, I want a set of the old leads. You want a set of the old leads? Yeah. Oh, thank you for my hug, buddy. Did you do good in your therapy? But, yeah, but we can't find it. You can't find it? Well, I think I we can help you. I think I can help you. Evan, do you care if we have a picture of you on camera? Yes. Wendy, do you care? That's okay. Okay. Evan, can you say hi to Mr. Hi. Aaron? Hi. Come here, let me tell you what we're doing. Do you remember that not too long ago you and I had a talk about the Tesla lights that were coming? Yeah. Guess what? They're here. And Mr. Aaron is going to teach us how to use the Tesla lights. And guess what they help us do? What? Well, you remember all the stuff in your tummy that we've been having problems with? Yep. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping that maybe it can help some of that. We don't really know for sure, but we're willing to try and see if it makes a difference. And guess what else it does? Remember how you always tell me, Miss Laura, squeeze me because I need to calm down? Well, you know what? The lights help people to calm down sometimes. And I'm thinking maybe that might help you a little bit when you're having a hard day. What do you think? And you can come do them as much as you want with me. What do you think? Okay. What do you think? Would you like to try some lights? Yes. Mom, can we try that, please? I noticed the, I noticed the boxes are different. Yeah, the boxes are different colors. You know why? because well this is how he explained it to me I don't really understand all of it yet because I have a lot to learn but one is yin and one is yang there's different types of energy and you want one type of energy at the head and you want another type of energy at the foot and what happens is when we turn them on Evan they turn this really cool purple color because they have gases inside of them and you know what they help do they help the energy flow through your whole system and make everything work better. So I wonder what those clear things are. Those are crystals that you get to hold while you lay down when the lights are on. Okay. Oh, here we go, bud. What you want to do is keep your eyes closed. We're going to turn out the top lights, okay? Okay, and Mom, if you'll turn out the light, Isn't that neat? Put your legs down, babe. You can. There it goes. What do you think about that? I feel good. Did it feel good? Better. How do you feel better? Tell me how. Well, complicated. Okay, tell me. The first is when I. When I first started, my body was overwhelmed. Like, it was? Like, if the weights were no, I'm not going to be able to do this. and not going to be able to handle it. Okay. And not going to be happy. Right. Okay, and now how does your body feel? It feels calm and nice. Really? So it feels better. Wendy, what did you say to me? that he seems to be much more agreeable and feeling much better. Yeah, I think it's pretty amazing he was able to articulate what he did on the table. I know. One thing to me that was amazing is he loves Brandon, but he can't control his hands around Brandon. I know. Um, every time Brandon has been here, when Evan gets here, Evan usually hits him. Yes. Um, this is the first time ever that Brandon came in and he actually went up to Brandon and hugged him, grabbed him and hugged him. And he's never hugged Brandon. He always hits Brandon. He was playing cooperatively with me out there too, very well. Was he? And that's not usual. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because, so. because of that extra bonus thing we did after the video. Game. Because of the bonus thing we did with the lights, you mean? Yep. Did it help you? Yes, it did. Good. <laughs> I'm so glad, buddy. That He's makes a me lot happy. More than he was, yeah, he is definitely. A lot more and a lot. But a lot more controlled because one thing with Evan is when we get energy in Evan, 
it's usually tearing things apart and having to contain all of that. And this is pretty contained, yes. more so than what I usually see. Show me your 